we go. Hello, folks, again, it's Liz Soria, your host here, the Tax Advisory and Biz Coach Success Podcast. And today I have another expert guest. And this one I think is going to really, really help a lot, especially for women who aren't there looking into probably going the process of divorce and figuring out what's going to happen financially for them. So I'm going to go ahead and do a brief introduction here. His name is Ed Fargo. He is the founder of the Burning River Advisory Group, a boutique financial planning company in Chris. The death of their significant other retirement, starting or selling a business. It actually is a father of what is here? Five, five teenager daughters? My goodness, Ed. No yeah. wonder that you advocate for women then here. So welcome, welcome, Ed, to our show. And uh, let's get started here because I'm really excited. Um, you know, now I understand why you have so much connection to the female gender here. Uh, so tell me, um, starting this business besides having five daughters, uh, what else really motivates you to realize that perhaps as women are in the process, and this is one of the topics that we're going to discuss because I know you're a certified financial planner and you're also a certified divorce analyst. Can you explain a little bit to the audience what that really means? The certified divorce financial analyst part? Yes, please. Yeah, so a certified divorce financial analyst, we're trained in the finances and economics of divorce. And, you know, I've been doing in the financial services industry for just about 20 years, primarily practicing in financial planning, helping, you know, traditional financial planning, goals-based advice, helping people accomplish retirement and college and protect their families, et cetera, do good with their money. And over the years, what we have, and we predominantly work with women, uh, it's a, the focus of our practice, but we started to see a, a fairly troubling trend. We started to see a lot of women who had come to us post-divorce, so after they had gone through the divorce process. And what we were noticing is that their settlement after divorce, after working with attorneys, was coming in as, I would say, subpar. You know, and so when I asked them, like, how did you derive at these numbers? How did you settle on, on this particular settlement? They gave us answers that were, again, troubling, like they weren't sure, I just followed the lead of my attorney, I didn't realize the decisions I was making at the time. Yeah, and so, and, and at that point, we couldn't do anything about it. You know, once that divorce settlement goes through, that's it for the most part. It's you know, done. There are no, yeah, it's done. There are no do-overs in the divorce world for the most part. And so, we had a decision to make to either accept that reality and just try to make the best of it, or try and get out in front of the problem because the issue is these women were not getting enough support during settlement, during settlement negotiations. They just were not prepared. And so as a part of that, I'd, um, I decided to get my certified divorce financial analyst designation. It is an advanced designation specifically in the economics of divorce because that world is completely different than anything else in the world of finance that I've seen. And, um, and so it's, it's hard for women to find the right support because quite frankly, there aren't very many advisors who do this type of work. The CDFA designation is relatively new. This is my first time that I ever heard of this designation. That's why I wanted you to clarify it because I think it's really important. Again, hopefully, you know, the women who are listening to, to, to you know, the, 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 the podcast or watching the video, that they're able to understand that these kind of plannings happen before signing that divorce decree because if not once it's done it's done deal so yeah so historically what would happen is there's a lot of financial advisors who advertise or market and say they help with divorce but that's almost always post divorce like you have your settlement now what do you do and the problem is is that you're you're not able to craft the right settlement before you get to that point. So the raw materials that you're working with post-divorce are far less than they would have been had you engaged with us prior to. And so that's where we're at today is we do a lot of divorce planning and um, helping women through the process of divorce. And of course, there is a, a synergistic effect because there's you know, your life before uh, while you're married, there's your life while you're going through the divorce process, which is very difficult in many instances. Sure. And then there's your life afterwards. And so we want to 
put together a cohesive plan that helps shepherd you throughout all three phases versus just saying, okay, well, here I'm at post-divorce. What do I do now? Correct. That's very interesting, yeah. And that's why I, I really wanted to uh, bring you here to, to, you know, to the show and, and, and kind of interview you because the topic really of today's you know, episode is how can women protect themselves financially before divorce? And, and like you mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago, I mean, unfortunately, there's not much you can do, you know, once you sign those divorce, uh, you know, uh, papers and, 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 and agreements. Um, I'm not, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, from my perspective, I mean, I don't know legally that would be a legal issue altogether, but I mean, if you prepare prior to that, what are some of the things that you done to help some of your uh, female uh, clients? Can you share that with us, please, Ed? Sure. Yeah. I think it's critical that if you're in a divorce situation, like you're actively going through divorce right now, or if you're in the contemplation stage, um, or even if you think that it's could be a possibility, right? That the re relationship isn't quite going the way you had hoped. Things are rocky. And it may not be that divorce is imminent. You know, just th the better part of prudence is planning for the worst and expecting, um, while expecting the best, right? Yeah. So, and this is going to sound cliche, but it's so very true in this arena. Knowledge is power. It is. It, it, when I say knowledge is power, it, it's power in a multiple, on multiple levels. So if I'm a woman who's considering or thinks this might be a possibility, what I want to do is know if this happens, am I going to be okay? And you need to prepare. You must prepare like anything else that we do in life. That's true. Mm -hmm. yeah, and sometimes people bury their head in the sand, you know, because no one gets married thinking that I'm going to get divorced. Right. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's the great thing about marriage is that you think it's going to last forever, but the statistics tell us otherwise about 50% of all marriages, first time marriages end in divorce over 60% of second marriages end in divorce as well. Wow. So, that's pretty high. Yeah. I, I would think it was a little bit less than that. Goodness. So, uh, you need to be extremely picky. <laughs> who's going to be, who's going to be your, 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 you know, your, your lover. <laughs> Because of that, right. I mean, well, percentage. it's a 50 50 chance that we might divorce. By the way, we, we, I'm happy I love you and we marry now, but if, you know, we have only a 50 50 you know, section there that we might be able to make it through. And that's 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 amazing to you know those, those statistics. I mean, I thought there were a lot less than that, especially in the first marriage. You know, I can see that happening, you know, perhaps even on the second one where you learn from the first, so you know, to divorce very quickly on the second one. <laughs> things well, don't work out sure i mean there's a certain comfort level anything you're more comfortable and familiar with it's easier to do it right that's so yeah. yeah that's exactly right that's why second marriages are more prone to end in divorce because you've been through the process you're comfortable familiar with it um all these things are very unromantic right so if you could take your emotions and separate it from yourself and said you know as you're preparing to get married if half of all marriages end the divorce, we probably should have a plan in case this goes astray. That would be prudent, non-romantic, completely right. logical, and yet nobody does it. And not that I'm suggesting that somebody do that, because again, you know, let's plan on, <laughs> let's try and make this work. But if you're finding that you're in a position to where maybe this isn't going right, this isn't going well, you need to take a step back and say, okay, I need to be prepared in case this happens. And it doesn't mean you're planning to get divorced at this point. You're just contingency planning. It's just like life insurance. You get life insurance, not because you plan on dying young, but you want to be prepared if something were to happen Thank to you. you. No one would argue that that is good, sound planning. Absolutely. So this is true of divorce. So when I said knowledge is power, the first place I would start with is understanding the rules of engagement when it comes to divorce law. And that's on a state-by-state -state basis. There are no federal statutes that govern divorce. This is done at the state level. So, I mean, you don't have to be an attorney. You don't have to go hire an attorney at this point. But you want to know in terms of if you're extricating yourself from your marriage, what are the rules of engagement? So what's considered a marital asset? What's considered a separate property or a separate asset? You know, assets that you've come into the marriage with. Um, and I'm not, this, this podcast, obviously we're not going to be able to get into all those answers, but we want to help. Right, it's too much detail to it. No, I agree. Yes. Correct. But at least it gets you the broader context of how to think about it. So know the rules of engagement when it comes to how divorce works. Um, and a part of that is going to be finding the right team. 
You can't go through divorce alone. I think it's dangerous if you try to do that. And so again, this is part of that knowledge is power piece. The, the team that you should have is you should always have a good attorney who understands, of course, the rules of your state, maybe even the rules of your county, because sometimes the county matters. That's sometimes right. the judge matters. Yes. It's, it's very specific. Um, you want someone who does at least 75% of their business in the divorce space. What you'll find um, with attorneys often is they do, they do a lot of things, right? They get a, a license to practice law, which means they can do criminal Multiple defense. Things. Yeah, they can do you know, all kinds of stuff, but you need someone who specializes in domestic relations. Thanks for bringing that up. Absolutely. And I always tell to my clients to the same thing. I say, you always need to find professional who specialize in certain niches because if they don't, they just serving everyone for every cause. And I don't think that's, I think that fits really the purpose of being a professional because the more expertise like you, you're helping women hopefully before they sign that contract or you create, you know, of helping them to financially have an agreement, something that's going to make sense and it's going to be a fair deal for them. Because I think one of the factors, uh, you know, that we all have as humans is that our emotions. Emotionally, sure. we are not rational, which is not. Uh, so, you know, when that happens, sometimes we have to kind of have someone else to mentor us and talk to us and say, hey, wake up because, okay, I know you're hurting and you're probably suffering or you're disappointed or maybe you're angry or whatever might be emotionally that a woman's going through at that stage in her life because it could have been a 20 year marriage. You know, they have children and grown up. This is difficult in time where you have to set I need to give up, but I have to move forward. Life is not over. This is just another beginning, another phase of your life. So it's wonderful that you have. Now, based on your expertise, Ed, will you mind sharing also what has been, I guess, obviously this is confidential without mentioning names or anything like that, but I mean, what has been one of your worst scenarios of hopefully that you catch right before the divorce to what's the average for a woman while they're going through this. Yeah. So I don't know if I can, uh, if there's a quote unquote worse, but there are some common things that we see to guard against. At least that you see that you've been able to help women in general, please. Yeah. So uh, you're right. Divorce is emotional. And that's the first thing to understand is that at the time when you need to be your best, you're often at your worst. And not just you, but your spouse is often at his worst. So um, not, it's, it's difficult enough knowing what to do devoid of those emotions. Like what are you legally entitled to? What's a marital asset? You know, and digging into the technical aspects of finance. But now you have to do that under this backdrop of incredible emotional strain. Even if you're the one initiating divorce, it can be very difficult to make a sound decision. That's if it right. comes out of the blue, I mean, we've seen cases, you know, 30-year marriage, the husband comes home and says, I want a divorce. Wife has no idea that it's coming. And that's really? one of the worst scenarios. Yeah, because she is completely shell-shocked. And if she's not the primary breadwinner in a relationship like that, or perhaps they had this division of labor in the household, well, maybe the guy, um, and this happens more with the older generation, but it still happens in the younger, where the guy tend to, tends to handle the big picture financials, it really puts her at a major disadvantage. So, and then they start to make compromising decisions along the lines of like, I just want to be in the house, you know, give me the house and you can have the into all the retirement assets, not understanding that those two pieces aren't equal. No, they're right? not. This happens a lot with women who um, have children. They want their children. They want to raise their children in the same house or they want right. to remain in the same house that they raise their families. And it becomes this huge emotional anchor and which could completely blow up their financial picture down the road. You know, we've all heard the, the adage, house rich, cash poor. You know, so you have this great house that you can't afford to live in, or you can't do anything else because you have to pay for this home. So that's one of the big mistakes we see is women oftentimes are too focused on one item. They, they lock down on one piece and they can't see the forest for the trees, so to speak. The other side of which is broader, but it, it's really not understanding their financial picture. They don't know what they have and they are relying on their husband to be a good person and tell them, um, even with attorney support and help. And, and I'm not saying that they're every, 
divorce is uh, a bad divorce, right? There no, some- there is. I, I think there's some, so, you know what, I think it, some, it depends on the matureness of, of the couple. It really does. And in my own means, I don't think age is a factor. I hate to say that, but I, I really have seen that throughout my lifetime that a lot of times you can have someone in their 30s and have a very mature level of, you know, decision making while versus to someone in the 15, 60, that might go through a crisis. And now they're kind of reversing going back to the twenties because now, like you said, they're in the process of thinking of divorcing. And, you know, now, especially, you know, men have a little bit of um, those that felt they have a little bit or extra entitlement of, you know, redoing their life right away. And what happens, I've seen a lot is that even before the divorce, they might have already a lover. Um, and, you know, that kind of brings a lot of pressure for, 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 for the, actual you know wife still because she's the mother of her children and guess what she cannot just walk away and start dating the guy she has children to still raise and it doesn't matter the age because i think mothers are always going to be mothers no matter what age the children are and um and what really amazes me is how men can sometimes and i'm saying all of them by all means but they can do that separation right away to kind of replace emotionally their their their, their sensation and you're right, women, we looking for that anchor. And that was a, such a good point. The home, the roof for us, for our children. And sometimes that's not a good exchange with their maybe financial, you know, assets that they have, whether they're, you know, their stocks and their 401ks and everything else that they have. So that's one of the things that you have noticed more where the woman says, I want a house. <laughs> I want to stay in the house. Right. Yeah. That house is represents safety and security. It's right. her anchor in many cases. And it's not to say that you shouldn't want the home or that it's inherently a bad idea. It's focusing almost exclusively on that to the detriment of all the other things. So we try to help you make balanced decisions, understand the implications of those decisions as you're making them. And that's where the emotions can really get in the way because um, you can get this, you know, laser focused on one item. And like I said, it can be to the detriment of all the other pieces. So, you know, and, and to your point that it, men have a tendency to be able to say remarry a lot faster than women going through divorce yeah. happens with widows as well. Like um, when, when a woman's spouse passes away, uh, it takes a lot longer for her to get re-engaged in dating and get remarried than for men. Men move on from that much faster. So yeah, I mean, that's the nature of life. I mean, if you want to call it like that, or, or maybe emotionally they're less, dis, you know, disconnected to to when they for them when in their mind it's done, it's done, and they just move forward. But it's important that women understand that as they're listening to this, because again, the point is that. While their main asset or what they think is their security is the roof over their head in their homes, it might not be the best choice at that point because if you cannot finesse, and I've seen this with some of my clients, by the way, that they divorce, and guess what? Luckily, you know, they got an alimony. And for those who are listening out there, and as you know, I'm a tax advisor, alimony is not longer deductible. So now, you know, a lot of men might not be willing to give up their alimony that easy. <laughs> versus to, you know, the, the government going after their um, actual, oops, um, actual, um, what they call it, uh, child support in this case, okay, which is going to probably be less. So the point is that, you know, all these things that are changing, people, you know, women need to prepare for this. And having someone like you that's been through that, helping other, you know, females, uh, I think it's crucial that they need to have that kind of support in someone you know, kind of talking to them and, and whispering to them, saying, hey, listen, you know, this is a logical thing to do because emotionally you have to put that on the side and think what's going to be a good balance. Now, and, and just before we wrap up real quick, how, do you create an analysis, uh, something that shows, okay, this is what the, the, the house is worth or the property is worth? Because maybe they have more than one property. That could happen very often. They, they were investing into real estate, right? How would you do that to make it, uh, you know, to show, you know, in this case, your female client, okay, this is what your equity of your home is. This is how much your stocks are. Do you do something similar to that, Ed? Would you explain that, please? Yeah, absolutely. There's a whole structured process for going through, you know, for preparing the settlement. Because what we'll do for clients is we'll go in and say, I'm working for the wife. I will go through my analysis and come to her and say, here's what I feel is a fair settlement, given what I know about divorce law, your financial Good. situation. 
what that does, it gives women power and confidence to advocate for themselves because oftentimes they have a difficult time doing so. Uh, women are wonderful at taking care of others. I look at my wife, she's great at, at looking at everybody else first and at herself last. That's true. And that's extremely uh, noble. But in the divorce process, if you carry that same mindset and you put yourself last, you will get the least. It's, it's not good in the divorce process. So when we can come in and, and what we do is we look at everything in their financial life. We want to see everything. When I say everything financially, I mean it. Bank statements, tax returns, any insurances that they have, retirement accounts, rental property. And if, okay. if the spouse won't give that information up willingly, we'll subpoena. I won't. Is that right? Yeah, we'll issue a subpoena. Repeat that again, that way we can, we can really make sure we, we understand what you just said there. You what? <laughs> yeah, so part, sometimes part of the problem is that uh, husbands, in this case, husbands will use money as a weapon. And so let's say the, the man has most of the financial information and he withholds it from the wife. And she's like, and we ask for a disclosure, a full and full, you know, upfront disclosure. But if he's not being a willing party, what we have to do is turn to the court system. And then the attorney can go and issue a subpoena to financial institutions and make them disclose those records. Because without knowing exactly what is in the marital home, the marital estate, we can't properly put together a settlement. So part of the knowledge is power piece is knowing what you're entitled to, knowing how to get it, even if the other party isn't doing so willingly and not settling. It's really important to not settle through this process. And again, this knowledge is power ideas. Like you don't know what you don't know. Well, and we need so, to get the fair share. I mean, that's, that's really right. what it comes down to. Right. And you're right. Uh, uh, some women are very good with their finance. Let's, let's admit it because we're pretty good at it. Uh, and then others... You know, they let the husband handle that, and that was kind of their share responsibility, right? Whether they were raising their kids or if they didn't right. have children, it doesn't matter. Maybe, you know, there's been a lot of situations where they live with the mother in law, the father in law. That's another thing that they've been a caretaker of those, or maybe an uncle or another family member, right? But the fact is that the, if the men had the role of running, uh, you know, the finance, th maybe half of the things they don't even know because they trusted their husband to you know, do that portion. Um, so that's interesting that they can do a subpoena and, and definitely um, reveal what really are the assets that they might even ignore that they actually possess along with their husband. That's right. There are protections out there. And even if you are the primary breadwinner, what we've seen in that case is that um, the husband is asking for more than he deserves. And, you know, everybody has this idea of what is fair. They're, they're getting right. information from their family, from their friends. And it makes it very difficult to understand what's right. And sometimes there's guilt. You know, let's say you're initiating, you're the woman initiating the divorce and you're the primary breadwinner. Maybe you have some guilt that, you know, you don't want this to happen. It's not going the right way, but you may still feel guilty. And then you give up more than you should. Or I've seen a lot of bullies on the, the husband's side. Wow. A lot more of the bullies where they're verbally abusive or they're, they're just, unyielding and they just think they're going to strong arm their way to a settlement and if you let them they will get it because the courts aren't there necessarily to advocate for you there are protections provided by the court that's why it's important to understand what divorce process do you want to go through there's not just one divorce process you can litigate that means going to court you can go through mediation you can go through arbitration there's all kinds of ways the process of divorce is one of the most important decisions that you'll make I would not make, yeah, I mean, you would not make that decision without consulting an attorney. And then, and um, tax advisor. <laughs> I think, it's, well, I think the financial side is really important. Yeah, no, the, the tax side of things, because we have to look at, because, um, and this is what oftentimes gets missed, those details. So yes. there's a role for the financial guy or gal, because, you know, we have extended knowledge in finance. And coupled under that is the tax advisor, because a lot of these decisions do have a tax implication associated they with do. them so to me the team should be you know have a divorce um a divorce attorney who specializes in this space that that's a must in most cases i would have a financial professional now there's some very simplistic cases where that may not be necessary but those are more, becoming increasingly rare as the world of finance has gotten more complicated and as women of 
their economic power has gone up and increased. Yes, they are. It, yeah, it behooves you to have a financial professional to help you along with that. And then, and, and lean on those folks for, profession, for legal and financial advice. Do not take legal or financial advice from anybody else other than those two professions. Um, then look to your family and your friends for support emotionally. They're going to have your best interest at heart. The advice they give may be beyond, just be aware that the advice they give may be beyond their um, expertise, right? Because they care about you or they went through a divorce themselves and they think because they've gone through it, your divorce is going to go the same way. Trust me, every divorce is different. different. Just like every pregnancy is different. That's right. You know? So just be careful where you get your advice from um, because that's the knowledge is power piece. Understand and then understand yourself. If you understand that maybe you're not as aggressive as you should be, you're not as comfortable in speaking up for yourself, or maybe you're the opposite. Maybe you're, you're, take, you're to take charge. <laughs> understand your strengths and what your weaknesses are and sure. then share that with your legal counsel in your financial counsel and those around you who can provide you the right type of support that you need. Because sometimes your friends are there and they're advocating for you, but they're egging you on when they need to slow you down. <laughs> you know, so. That's a good point. Yeah. No, listen. Yeah. And like you said, you know, with family and, and closest friends, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, or, or we're hoping <laughs> that they have the best interest at heart for you. Right. But the reality is, again, it's an emotional connection that you have with them because whether they're, you know, they're your bloodline or perhaps there's been a connection of many years of a relationship with a good friend, as we call them, right? A best friend. Um, but the fact is that that's the emotional side. It's great to have this for because, yes, again, women, we have a tendency of being a lot more emotional for many, many, many reasons. Right? We can't get into this in the podcast, but it is a fact. So, therefore, when it comes to making financial decisions, we really, I mean, ladies, we need to have the support that we really need. Uh, don't do it by yourself because at the end, chances are, and, and I would imagine it's a very high percentage of women taking a huge loss. Again, thinking about the concept, I keep the house, I keep the house. Can you afford the house? Are you going to be able to continue paying maybe the mortgage payments? Are you, or are you going to be able to pay the rent? Are you going to be able to continue having the lifestyle that you have had along with your husband? So I think we need to come to a a point of our lives that we need to make decisions and those decisions are going to be extremely important for our future okay and i think having someone like you to support them before the actual divorce is extremely crucial it really is now i want to ask you something real quick what do you usually suggest uh because again unfortunately you cannot help the ladies who already have been through a divorce but prior in, into it how many months does it take? What's the time frame here that perhaps you might suggest that they need to prepare and hire someone like you being certified and, and you know, having a team in their side, unfortunately, to go through this process as smooth as possibly, um, Ed? Yeah, I don't think there's a, a single right answer to that. I, th I would okay. do it in stages. So oh. the, first, the first thing, whether you're actually, this advice applies whether you're going through a divorce or not, is know what you have. Get all of your financial documents. Have conversations with your spouse if you're not having them now. I would not blindly just say, oh, my husband handles this or my significant other handles this. I would not do that. And it doesn't mean you take control. It doesn't mean you take over. And it doesn't mean you have to become an expert in finance. You need to know what you have, where it's at, and then just periodically check in. So that's the first step. Understand what you have and be connected to your spouse's handling of money because there's a big problem with financial infidelity in the country. And financial infidelity is basically when one spouse hides their financial habits from the other spouse. It primarily happens... In, uh, from one spouse is a spender and the other spouse may be more of a saver. True. And, you know, the infidelity part is that they're going behind their spouse's back doing things that the other spouse would not appreciate. And one of the... And I'm sorry to interrupt there. And by the time they find out, it has escalated where maybe they have a big debt and, and the wife is not even, spouse is not even uh, aware of. Yeah. And here's the kicker, right? Even oh. if um, during marriage, let's say that happened where the, you know, the husband ran up a bunch of debt the wife is still responsible for that debt in divorce settlement. So not only are assets split, 
but liabilities are split, even That's if you right. have no knowledge of it. Yes. So keeping your finger on the pulse of what's going on in your house financially is really important. Um, to your question, you know, when should you start this? I would start understanding your financial picture better. If, if all you did was just get a copy of all the statements and put it away in a file, that's fine. Credit card statements, bank statements, everything can be gotten online for the most part these days. I would start there. And if things start to escalate, and you're concerned that this might turn into something more, uh, right. I'm not saying you have one fight, but it's really serious, that's when I would reach out to a financial professional. I would reach out to a CDFA first um, because there's some work that the CDFA can do even before an attorney gets involved that can help make the process of working with the attorney simpler and more cost effective. We support the attorneys in the process. So the attorney is always, in my opinion, the most important professional in the mix. But our work, because look, we're finance professionals, divorce is a legal proceeding, but most of, a ton of the work ends up being on the financial negotiation side, which is where we have our expertise. That's why having us into the, into the fold makes a lot of sense. We can help prepare, work closely with the attorney, and then loop you in, in terms of um, bringing the attorney who can walk you through the legal side of things. One last thing I didn't mention earlier, but I want to make sure I do is, sure. is this the time not to be too proud sometime and I would say go and get professional help whether it's a therapist or a divorce coach absolutely uh, don't shy away men have a much bigger issue with this than men do uh, men have a much bigger issue with this than women do but do not I've heard too many women say oh I'm just not that type of person that's right, just not right. me yeah and it well, could I think we're in denial I, I think, I, that's what it kicks in denial and, and you know what you brought a good point and by the way we're not doing you know this episode against Matt I mean we just say hey we need to in a very intelligent way prepare ourselves because again that's a very good point why not find out what you have already do it now right. I mean you're entitled to that I mean as the wife you're entitled to know well you know what has been our investments because now especially I mean especially last what 30 years plus and I mean women are doing con the contribution to financially help the household so we're not talking about mostly women like it was back in our, you know, grandparents, you know, time that the men was the way used to go out and work. And then, the, you know, the wife would stay raising their children and cleaning the house and cooking. Now we're talking about almost a, 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 a fair deal, you know, of women going out there working full-time jobs too and bringing money to the house. So plus doing all their, you know, daily tasks. So I think it's important that whatever aspect, whatever, you know, uh, person you are as a female right now in your life, find out what your financial, you know, finance are. You need to know where you stand in are, you know, with, with your husband. And I think it's, that's a very good point. And then if it escalates to a divorce, then hire Ed because Ed will <laughs> are able to really open up your eyes and give you clear vision and path of what steps you're going to need to do prior to signing that. Because I always believe that, you know, if we do good things from our hearts with the best intention, things really work out for both parties. Because at the end, no matter what, there was an emotional connection. Perhaps that's, again, the father of your children. So, but you need to be logical too. And, and like you said, men can move, you know, for some reason, they're capable and good for them, you know, to, to you know, move on a little bit easier. But I think a lot of time is because men also, and this is just my personal opinion about this, just at something, you know, that I normally do, by the way, in my, in my interviews, a little bit personal side, is that I think men also, they hide their emotions. So because they've been brought up saying you cannot cry, you cannot show your emotions, I think men suffer a lot from the inside and they need help too. So whoever's listening to it, we're not going against men, we're just saying, hey, you guys need help too. So I definitely, I think the best thing is if you can come to a mutual agreement, why not? Do it now. You're both adults, you know, do the best. Uh, and I think that's what we can do, right? But it's phenomenal, your information, Ed. And um, so again, Know what you have now before you even hear the word divorce. <laughs> oh, you think it's about it. Yeah, absolutely. There's no downside to being more connected to your money. And that's and one of the things in the intro that you mentioned that we really believe in is if women want to achieve full equality, they need to be financially equal. And I look at my daughters and then how I'm trying to raise them to be strong, independent women. 
And I know that looking from my mom's perspective, you know, my mom and my dad were divorced when, you know, when I was younger and she didn't have any economic mobility. She did not have the ability to really advocate for herself um, for a, a number of reasons, being an immigrant, first year, um, first generation immigrant, et cetera. The point is, is that that's a bad example of something that I would not want to see women have to suffer and go through. And I look at my girls as that next generation in my job is to help them understand how money empowers, you know, what money can mean for your life. It's not going after money for the sake of money itself, but you do need it in today's world. And if you manage it effectively as a resource, as a tool, it could be a very powerful resource and a very powerful tool as you go out and, you know, fend for yourself and you can maintain that independence. And so often women, particularly going through divorce, are afraid to make the right decision for them because they're like, I, 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 I'm, I know this is not the right relationship. I know I should get out, but I can't because I'm stuck financially. And that usually is not the case, but they convince themselves of that and they end up in a relationship for far longer than they should be. So go get help. It's out there. It's available. And, yeah, it's available. And this is, again, not about you know beating up men. I mean, men could take this advice and just turn it around and apply it in their life. It's the same type of advice. Uh, hey, listen, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I think both parties should do it. I mean, you know, again, I think when, you know, you, you come into a, a, an agreement without, you know, um, the anger, uh, with just having a clear mind and open heart, that's what I call it. Uh, no matter what, this was a significant person in your life. Why fight them? I mean, trying to make as much peace. And I know it's easier said than done. And I know there's some relationship on there that they just got really to that part of their you know connection that is just a disastrous but hopefully if you can avoid it before it gets there you know you're two mature people sit down have a conversation talk about it you know because it's going to just work best for both of them at the end of the divorce you know it's going to be a, a better arrangement for both of them but ed thank you so much because really this gives a lot of hopes to women out there who are thinking I might have to go through this. Like you said, maybe they might be able to work out things and hopefully that might be the case. But if it's not, let's be realistic women that sometimes we need to make decisions. And yes, we need to think beyond our hearts. We need to think where our minds because it's going to you know, hurt us financially and it's difficult. So again, Ed, thank you so much for being here. By the way, where can uh, the audience reach you, your website again, and any other information that you would like to go ahead and provide now, please? Sure, Our, um, we have, well, as you mentioned in the show, we have a new startup company that's in the works called enlightenher.com, just like it sounds, enlightenher.com. The website's being developed, we're in the final stages of it. So right now it's, uh, well, as of today's date, it's not up and running, but uh, eventually it's where I would start. And then we have our well management business, which deals with personal financial planning, and that's at burningriverag.com. So burningriverapplegeorge.com. Excellent. Once again, really, I, I mean, I, I'm so glad to have, have you here in the show, it really is, because like I said, I mean, you know, we have a, a variation of audience and I know I have also females listening to my podcast and watching my videos and it really does help a lot. And uh, do you, uh, during your assessment, just before I let you go, uh, do you have any kind of like consultations or anything where, you know, uh, you kind of figure out whether or not, you know, this person has, um, an, I, call, I guess I, what I'm trying to get to is an assessment to find out whether or not this is something they should proceed because financially, yeah, they, they do have quite a few assets that they should be able to negotiate <laughs> prior to the right. divorce. <laughs> yeah, we always offer um, a free 30 minute consultation. Oh, excellent. Um, where we can sit down and whether we do a lot of work, you know, like video, and we do obviously a lot of work in the area. Um, great thing about today's technology is we can help a lot of people That's and in right. fact we start yeah we started enlighten her because we wanted to broaden our reach we have a lot of knowledge we work very closely with clients getting very deep in their financial situation but we can only help maybe a couple hundred people a couple hundred households and so our mission is to try and get that word out and get information in people's hands empower them as mentioned, we offer that 30 minute conversation, um, no cost, just to give you a sense of what's out there. And if we're a good fit, ultimately we wanna, we wanna make sure that if we're gonna work together that we're a good fit. But in that 30 minute conversation, I will tell you almost always get some idea in terms of what's a, a good next step. 
Well, and again, thank you for uh, definitely helping uh, you know the woman out there that not only, like you said, they're going through a difficult time in their lives, uh, but definitely uh, you're there to support them, at least in the financial side, <laughs> that hopefully it, it, it will be a good end, at least in that term. So Ed, thank you, really, I appreciate it. And I hope we stay connected. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up this um, interview right now. Thank you, Ed. It's been a pleasure to have you and everyone out there, folks. Uh, thank you for watching. And remember to like, share, and comment. And yes, subscribe. It really helps us to have better exposure and um, you know expand a little bit more our value information because everybody's looking for good, valuable information. Again, this is Liz Sawyer, your host. Until the next episode, I will see you very soon. Goodbye, everyone. Take care.